Hello, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for attending this session. I'm Wei Chen from ARM. My site is located in Shanghai, China. So I fly a long, long way to here to attend this attention. <laughs> uh, it's my great per, uh, pleasure to have this opportunity to give this presentation and share my knowledge about Unikernel and Unicraft. But I'm not sure how many people have some experience about Unikernel. Is anybody? <laughs> Phil. Uh, after Unicraft annou announced, I'm uh, actively uh, active working with the community and get involved in this, this project. So in this presentation, I intend to, one, uh, I will give some simple Unicornal uh, basic concept setting us and introduce how we can benefit from Unicornals. Uh, two, we will introduce current states of the Unicornal and discuss what obstructs uh, widely adoption of Unicornals. The next is the first revolution because we regard the Unicraft as the second. And here is the main topic, Unicraft brings the second revolution. The following instructions uh, are some stuff uh, for ARM. We will introduce what we have done and the gaps on ARM. I will finish in a summary. If we uh, still have time, uh, a demo will be a plus. Uh, I use this page to do a um, brief description of Unikernels. Unikernels are specialized single address space images that are constructed by a special collection of needed libraries. Uh, normally, an application just needs a very tiny fraction of generic OS functions. Uh, for example, if we want to build a, a web service, we just need a block device and network device libraries for device I.O. and file system libraries to access file, network stack libraries to transfer and receive data, and some environment and service settings like HTTP parameters, and a runtime library just like Python, or and the last one is your, your application code to provide service. Mm. A unikernel is an image that pack above libraries, just above libraries, not anymore, into an executable format and can be deployed to a machine or virtual machine as minimal dependence. Let's see what we can benefit from unikernels. Uh, unikernel requires no generic OS, so we can shorten the distance between the hardware and software. Uh, we can use the function call instead of the system call to reduce the system contact uh, switch and memory copy overhead. This will give us fantastic and predictable performance. Unikernel also contains only needed library. This means it will have uh, has very tiny uh, footprint, sometimes in uh, tens to hundreds to hundreds kilobytes and this will also give us a very small attack surface, so uh, it, improve, it improves the security. Unicornals can also boot very fast, sometimes in tens of milliseconds. Uh, let's consider the following user cases that was supposed to, what Unicornals was supposed to spot. Uh, the first use case, I think it is the most important reasons why I'm here and why my pro proposal has been accepted. Unicornal can be used as a special kind of container. This is uh, probably the most uh, with, uh, obvious and mostly well-developed well user case. Uh, Unicornal projects like OSV and Mirage OS aim to deploy Unicornals to clouds. The second is the host service. As we know, uh, Mirage OS has already, be, already been used in HypeKit Weeping kit and dedicated kit as a container uh, host service to like DSCP to improve the security of the container host. Um, the third is the IoT devices like camera and vehicle and other IoT things often have very few system resources and has limited uh, network bandwidth. Unikernel provides everything needed 
to deploy software to such kind of device. Uh, uh, of device, so it's, uh, it's ideally for uh, such type of environment. The last is edge computing. Unikernels can be created and terminated very quickly. It has it has very tiny, small uh, actor surface, so it's, it's, it's more secure. So uh, just like next generation communication uh, base station, uh, Unikernel is very field, is, is very useful for such kind of environment. Uh, but I think most of you has deployed your service to container to which machine, but I think few of you has deployed the application to unikernels. But what obstructs the unikernel? Widely adoption of unikernels. Uh, after removing the generic OS, it brings several drawbacks. The first is that uh, resource isolation for multiple unikernels. With, uh, without genetic OS, we don't have process to protect our job contacts. Uh, we don't have schedule to arrange our jobs. We have to do a lot of work to run multiple unit kernels on a host side by side with strong isolations. The second is that it's unable to reuse the ex existing drivers uh, in Linux or other operating system. In this case, we have to write Lots of libraries for device driver. It's a substantial task because the hardware changes rapidly. Uh, the third is that every time we want to create a unit kernel, we have to start from scratch. This is because uh, you will find when you want to create a unit kernel application, you will find lots of the libraries will be used. Your application haven't been implemented in the unit kernel projects. Uh, you have to implement at, at the same time. So it's a huge task. Or if you, if you want to reuse the pre-built libraries in Linux, it's also hard, it's possible, but it's very hard. Uh, in the few, in, in last few years, uh, we are trying to deploy the unit kernels to which machine. Fortunately, modern hypervisors provide a virtual machine with uh, strong context isolations. As we know, hardware isolation for resource is a key feature of a virtual machine. In this case, uh, the resource isolation between unit kernels can be achieved at a low cost uh, simply by using hypervisor to create a fresh virtual machine for a distinct unit kernel. And the second is schedules. Hypervisors mostly uh, have several, uh, several schedules can be used for different scenarios. Uh, because one unit kernel occupy a dedicated virtual machine, while the hypervisors schedule the virtual machine, the, the unit kernel job is being scheduled at the same time, so we can use the uh, hypervisor schedule to arrange our jobs. The third is that virtual machine always provide a consistent set of, of virtual devices. This means we just need a constant set of library for virtual devices. This will free us from the substantial task uh, of implementing lots of uh, various libraries for device. But it's still not easy to create unit kernels. We still have to rewrite almost all the code all the existing, existing applications uh, for a unit kernel. We have to port the code manually, and it, it, it consuming lots of times. Even you are experienced developer, you, it's still easy to make uh, mistakes. And it's, it's still hard to reuse existing researchers and developers. Uh, for example, uh, while we are uh, developing the mini Python for Mirage OS, it costs us three months to porting and testing. And the most famous unit kernel uh, 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 project, uh, OpenNFV, is, uh, uh, for click OS, it costs about two years. So it's, it's the porting efforts. The price of porting is very high. I think it's, uh, except you have some special reason, uh, you don't want to pay such price. Uh, luckily, 
In, la in later last year, the NEC Laboratory Europe has announced the project Unicraft. Unicraft is a unicornal, uh, Unicraft. Uh, we regard Unicraft as the secondary version of Unicornal because this project's goal is to design a totally new Unicornal development, or we can call it a SDK to reduce the effect of converting exist existing applications to Unicornal. It has three improvements. The first is it's very easy to reuse existing researches and developments. It can be configured very easily. The third is the most important one. The porting effort requires no rewriting. In the first case, we can just recompile our code with the Unicraft tool chain to transfer our application to a Unicornal. Uh, in, in the worst case, you just need some small changes to the actual application code and then use the Unicraft tool chain to compile the code to a, and transfer to a Unicornal application. Use the recompiling re instead of the rewrite is a big change. But how can Unicraft achieve this? Unicraft has two important, comp uh, two, two important components. The first is the library pool. The library pool containing uh, the libraries for Unicraft users to select from to create Unicornals. Mm, from, from this feature, we can see from button to up, the libraries can be organized in two. The first is architecture libraries. Uh, here contains the libraries for specific computer architect architectures like x86, ARM, or MIPS. And, and above is the platform libraries, where the target can be Zin, KVM, uh, bare metals, and Linux user space application. And, uh, and, the, and the top is, is the main library's pool. Uh, which uh, this pool containing the OS function, uh, the OS functionality libraries like uh, memory allocators, memory schedules, device driver, file systems, uh, uh, debug and profiling, and some standard libraries just like libc, uh, libnew libc, and libssh, and some runtime just like lib Python, lib OCam, or lib Erlen. The second component of Unicraft is the build tool chain. Unicraft pro provides a Linux uh, style K, a Linux K config style menu, menu for user to select and select library and config your application. It also provides some scripts for user to uh, to reuse or integrate with. Uh, integrate the pre-built libraries in Linux in your application. And it can generate binaries for multiple uh, platforms automatically. Uh, from the development, de development process, the Unicraft library can be divided into two parts. The first is internal libraries. The second is external libraries. Currently, most, most OS functionality libraries has been implemented as the internal libraries. The debugger, uh, memory allocate, boot, and schedules has been implemented as the internal libraries. And other libraries like libweb, this, uh, uh, the network stack, and the standard libraries, lib, uh, libnewlib, has been implemented as external libraries. But indeed, the internal libraries has no different than external one, except the fact that internal libraries are part of the main Unicraft repository and live under the lab directory. And they, don't, they, they do not use any external source files, this means all the source files for internal library has be, must be placed 
under this folder, and they must not have any dependence on external libraries. This because uh, this means the Unicraft can be built by itself. Let's see how to use the tool chain to port or develop an application. Uh, if we want to create a Unicraft application, we need three basic files. The first is a make file. Uh, this make file is very similar to the make file of Neo's K module, um, when, uh, when, which, uh, which was built outside of the Linux tree. Uh, a, a make file contains no more than following things. The first, uh, we have to location, we have to point the location of Unicraft uh, main repositories, just like we point the Linux kernel source tree in the uh, in a, in the make file of the module. The second is the external libraries folder, and some a third is the libraries that will be used in your application. The third file is the main make file. This file is really important. And in this file, we will tell Unicraft how to uh, compare our application source code to a, uni, uni, to a Unicraft. Uh, from this example, we can see that the first session, we will use a Unicraft predefined function at lib to register our application to Unicraft. The second session is the source file list that we will be compiled for the for you for, for the uni, unicorn application. Currently the source file has been spot uh, has three types C file, C plus plus and SMB files. The third set, the third set section is the pre pre built library uh, pre built libraries that will be used in your application. This pre built libraries uh, is, is existing in the Linux or other operating systems. If the pre built libraries com uh, compilation flag, uh, if the pre built libraries uh, and the application have the compatible compilation flag, we can add the pre built library uh, to the link object directly. But if the pre built libraries and the application have incompatible compilation flags, we have to rebuild, we have to rebuild the libraries with applications compilation um, flags and then added it to this object, uh, link object. Uh, the following section is some flags or include patches that we were used to in, in, a, in a comparing process. And the third file is a make file to UK. This make file is a new, new K configs style snip. Uh, you will define the configurations for your application and define the dependence of external libraries here. We use this file to populate the Unicraft uh, menu config for you to select libraries and do some configuration. After this, we can, use, we can just save and exit and compare the code. Let's use the Python, for example. After uh, decomposing, uh, decomposing the Python, we know that while we are building Python in Linux, the, uh, the, we will link to libthread, libutils, libm, libz, libdl, and libc. If Unicraft provides enough of functionality libraries, the Unicraft libc, new libc, will be fully compatible with the libc. In this case, most pre-built libraries will be, uh, can be linked to Unicraft application directly. In this example, if, uh, if all dependence for Python has been ready on, in Unicraft, we can just make uh, create a make file and make file to UK to tell Unicraft how to build our Python source code and use the menu uh, K config, menu, uh, config the UK to populate Unicraft's menu to select the all functionality libraries. For example, we, we want to select different schedules or we, we want to select the 
file system, uh, the different type of, of file systems. And then we can save and exit and type make to generic uh, Unicraft Python uh, binaries that can be run on ARM KVM. Uh, the, the pro, uh, deploying or putting an external libraries isn't too different from putting an application. Uh, the first, um, the, but no make file is needed for putting uh, external libraries. And the, the make file UK follows the same format of the application we have described before. One different relates to the, uh, conf the config UK is that you should surround your setting with manual config that enable selecting or deselecting the libraries. Uh, here is the ARM sports radios. The Unicraft come with the native ARM32 sports on Zen and uh, uh, Linux user, user space application. Yes, another architecture support by Unicraft is uh, x86. 64-bit uh, six, six, x86. After discussing with the community, we have took charge of the ARM sports of Unicraft. Um, the goal of ARM sports of Unicraft is to enable the Unicraft on uh, Unicraft for ARM32 and ARM64 on Zing and QM-based hypervisors. But the first target uh, is ARM64 KVM. As the QMUC is the de facto stand deployment of KVM, we will start from it. And in order to reach as many as KVM users and make the usage easy, we will lower the pro, uh, pri priority of other platforms like KVM Tool or Mu KVM. Uh, Mu -KVM. And currently, the code for ARM32 KVM is ready and is in reviewing. Uh, here is what we have done. The first, we have improved the multi-arc and multi-platform support by modifying the build scripts and restructuring the folders. This will make us to add new uh, architecture support to the Unicraft easier. And we have added a boot core for ARM64, uh, ARM uh, QMU KVM, and currently we only support single, single process for the first version. The, the SMP sports will be, uh, is currently not in the roadmap. We have also enabled the uh, MAU to increase the uh, uh, memory performance and the security. We have also set up a one-man mapping physical memory list and uh, uh, we have set up one mapping page table for physical memory and virtual memories. In this case, the developers doesn't need to care about the memory mapping. And we have added an ex ex exception table to handle the sync, IQ, and other exceptions. The device tree spot has been added at, a, at the beginning. To, this will improve the Unicraft compatible on ARM platforms and a yard, yard library for early debug console and SDGIO. And a visual timer for tickets, for uh, for tickets to uh, f f to print some uh, time mess uh, uh, timestamp on debug messaging. Like uh, like mo most Unicorn projects, Unicraft uh, supports single process but multiple thread. Uh, but the currently the Unicraft schedule library is still in review. This is uh, this is doing by the by costing loop. And on ARM side, we still need to improve, to, to implement the interrupt controller for timer interrupts. We have to implement, we have to implement GIG V2 for low cost ARM SOC like uh, IoT devices and GIG V3, GIG V4 for high performance ARM SOC like ARM servers. Uh, the device, the device pass-through is currently not in our uh, low map, so the Geek V2M and Geek V3 ITS for MSI and MSIX will not be supported at the first time. Uh, we still need to improve the ARM virtual time libraries 
the current timer library is only provide tickets for time uh, timestamp, but we still need to edit the spots for schedule. We have to sync the timer API uh, with the uh, with the costing. Here's the forcible libraries on ARM. Mm, as we mentioned before, we still need to implement uh, kick interrupts for kick, kick timers drivers for Unicraft and uh, ARMVH, which are timer libraries. In order to use, the, use some advanced feature of which machine, like device hot plug, we still need to implement which IOML for KVM and Thin bus for Zing. If we want to support some application like DBDK, that will require the PCI pass through. We still need, need to implement a generic ECAM PCI host controller. Yeah, currently we are doing, we are, uh, we are implementing the virtual device drivers to improve the IO performance, like net front and block front for Zing, and which IO net and block for KVM and tap DEV for Linux user. About the PSCI driver, because currently we only use a hypercore to shut down the virtual machine, but this hypercore can be used only on KVM. Uh, it could not be used in thin or bare metals. So we want to implement a PSCI interface libraries, for, which can be shared by thin and bare metal. Here's the, some static state for uh, Unicraft Unicernal. We have built a, a hard world sample. The footprint of this sample is very small. It's about 27 kilobytes. And the, memory usage, the minimal memory usage is about 132 kilobytes. Include 64 kilobytes for device tree. If you don't use device tree, uh, you can optimize it, and well, this will save your memory. And 28 kilobytes for images include text, uh, data, and bit sections. The, the images currently require for four kilobytes alignment because we use MAU to, pro, pro, to, pro, to protect the data. And 20 kilobytes for page tables. This, uh, the page, page table memory is not in the BSS we use a reserved memory for a page table. If you don't need a page table, this also can be optimized. The left 20 kilobytes for stack, uh, 20 bytes is for st stack and heaps. The put time on uh, ARM64 Cortex A53 uh, with a QMU is about 50 uh, milliseconds. It's, it's very fast. Uh, Uh, Unicraft uh, reduced the barriers of converting an, an application to Unikernel greatly. So it will expand the Unikernel uh, ecosystem. It will make uh, it will make uh, IoT, uh, IoT edge computing and cloud applications benefit uh, Unikernels easier. But Unicraft is still new. We still need to implement more OS functionality libraries, like more file system, uh, more schedule, more memory allocator, and more device drivers. We still need to improve the compatibility of standard libraries, standard libc. Currently, we only implement a limited set of port 6 APIs in Unicraft's uh, libc. We still need to implement more external libraries, uh, just like some a standard library or network step like libwip. Uh, we have to spot, we have to add some high-level high language spots like libocam, uh, ocam, Node.js, Lua, and other high languages. The platforms and hybrid spots must be, yes, still need to be, still need to uh, be improvement. We, we want to spot given tool or UKVM in later. And we, yes, we, we still need to enable the profiling and tracing for debug. Uh, because we still have time, we can see a demo.
Yeah. Uh, this is a demo on uh, ARM server. This server is a uh, uh, Kevin Stand X. It has uh, 96, uh, 96 cores. Oh, sorry. Here's the Unicraft's uh, project repository. It's hard to... We have to place our application to Unicraft uh, applications. This will reduce some effort to modify your make file to change to point to the Unicraft's uh, repository. Here is, uh, here is the fault where your external libraries will be placed, and here is the main Unicraft repository. Okay, this is the menu of Unicraft. For you, for users to select libraries and uh, to do some configuration, it's very similar to the Linux Linux uh, K config menu. Yeah, we can see the support architectures. Current is support three architectures: the X uh, six four bit X X eighty six and six four bit ARM. ARM V8 and 32 bit ARM V7. Currently, we support almost uh, all generic uh, ARM V8, ARM, ARM, v, uh, ARM V7, also Z for ARM. Yeah, for ARM V8, we support most popular, uh, popular ARM profiles in 64-bit. Okay, let's look. Uh, let's build this course for ARM KVM. Yes, we can configure the libraries we were used. Okay, let's build. And run. Okay, this is the program has been run. It's very simple. Yeah, you can run it as a virtual, uh, just like a virtual machine image. Okay, here's the reference. The first is the Unicraft project wiki. You can get more information from this link. And the second, the second link is the Unicraft repository. You can, if you have, if you are interested with it, you can get caught from it. 
And if you, are, you have any questions, you can send email to this mailing list. This mailing list is shared with the meals. And if you in stream with ARM, you can get ARM patches from this link because the patch is uh, still being in review, has been matched. Thanks.